This video looks at some of the ways that passive house projects diverge from conventional practice. During a decade of passive house workshops, we've often discussed how the design process in passive house tends to diverge from the conventional. For workshop participants who want to get more practice in applying passive house ideas, we often suggest take a prior project, carefully consider what aspects of that project might be worth revisiting. In this video, we will take a conventional residence from roughly 25 years ago. We'll explore how much of its essential character can be retained and what tweaks we might use to bring it closer to the performance goals of Passive House. This video builds on ideas covered in prior videos. So if you've not already done so, please have a look at the big ideas of Passive House and also the video about energy balances as a guide to design choices and capital investments. Our past project dwelling includes an open plan kitchen, lounge and dining room on the ground level, and two bedrooms and a study and bath on the upper level. As with many conventional designs of that epoch, it includes little in the way of solar protection, and the glazing around the facade has been distributed uncritically. So what might be ripe for change? Passive house designs often constrain the glazing to the east and west. In this residence, the glazing in the stair, the dining area, and the east bedroom are likely candidates. Reconsidering the width of the glazing would preserve most of the views while limiting heat loss through the glass, as well as reducing costs. That these glazings are also devoid of shading is another red flag. The risk of overheating in a passive house would be considerable if we do not do something about it. However, extending the roof overhang on the east and west is unlikely to help. Indeed, a horizontal overhang at the head of these windows is also unlikely to help. A better combination is to change the glazing size as well as including horizontal and vertical shading fins at the east and west glazing. The north glazing at the kitchens is also a bit excessive from a passive house perspective. We can maintain views, improve comfort, and reduce cost by focusing that glazing on a narrower horizontal strip. What about the south glazing? We might constrain the glass a bit at the entrance. Primary change, though, would be to add overhangs to the ground level windows. It might suffice to limit them to the width of each opening, but if overheating is still reported, we might want to make an overhang continuous. The windows on the upper south facade also need shading. We could revise the roof to allow for an overhang roughly in line with the projection at the ground level, or we just might match the overhangs at the ground level. Ideally, we would want to ensure that these overhangs do not form thermal bridges through the facade. Having adapted the solar aperture, we would do well to consider how solar gains entering the rooms are absorbed. Additional mass where sun patches linger might smooth out heat gains. And there's no doubt that the facade will be thicker, so we might also look at, at the interior aperture of the facade. Should we splay the inside window reveals a bit to improve sight lines? But it's not only the facade that needs to adapt. A passive house building will include mechanical ventilation with heat recovery to maintain air quality if we choose to close the windows. So our design process also needs to ensure that natural ventilation is a viable option. We'll cover those on our next video.